mortgages every month. So it's paid. The underwriting standards had to change the degree. They basically became, can you breathe? If you can breathe, you breathe we'll give you then money. we'll give you money. What the fuck? Subprime lending. Subprime. SPSP. Bundled up the subprime mortgages. Subprime. Prime mortgages. Good and bad apples. And sold them to investors in a single package. Fucking shell game. These are called collateralized debt obligations. Called permit bullshit. For short. Credit default swaps. CDOs promise great returns. The, the back and Emperor's got no clothes on. Money from money. Roll up, roll up. They forgot that CDOs depended on real things, like American house prices continuing their 60 year rise. Yeah. Everybody seems a winner. Well, that ain't physics, mate. You would create those bonds and then go to our clients, typically insurance companies, hedge funds, yeah. banks, yeah. money managers, pension funds, and we would deliver or check. engineer a bond to fit those needs that they have. It's your bonds, eh? Most of the structured finance world that blew up was actually homegrown here. In the Britain? UK banks got involved with things that... United Kingdom, oh look, alchemy bought it. Alchemy. Some got into a very sexy, almost incomprehensible derivative contracts. Synthetic mezzanine CLO squares. Now, I'm not sure I know what it is either, but I promise you some of the UK banks have them. To be honest with you, I don't think many people understood what CDO was. I won't pretend that I did. It, the simple fact of the matter is, is that they, things have become so complicated that only those people directly involved with the creation of those products knew what they were. <laughs> the CDO guys were, had every sales trick in the book. Um, I mean, it, it was classic um, sort of salesman technique. If they weren't selling CDO funds, they'd been selling second-hand cars or something because their whole strategy was to make people feel silly if they didn't understand the product. Everybody, yeah. I the emperor. Wanted to be the emperor had no clothes on. No yeah. No Look at the cut, the length. Isn't it magnificent? The old thing. Yeah, yeah, it's magnificent. Dumb fuck. Sorry, took me my mouth off. This is great stuff. Then the risk was insured, and those contracts traded in another multi-trillion dollar. Yeah, financial musical chairs. It was about risk management. Yeah, financial musical chairs. It was a global pyramid selling scheme. Yeah. One dollar of capital, supporting a stunning forty dollars of lending. On this game, was the heart of this new banking yeah. system. You know why? Because I'm here. The tools underpinned the city's breathless boom, but the Bank of England was playing catch up. And there was one morning I was summoned to Roma. breakfast at the Roma. Roma. Strange. That's and where the police whacked that, that member of the public. Um, but uh, at that, I found myself trying to explain CLOs to some very senior people at the Bank of England. Uh, they didn't know what I was talking about, but I ended up using the back of a menu to actually explain it to them. At least they had an excuse. Chancellor Gordon Brown had reduced the Bank of England's responsibilities for regulation. He gave them to the new Financial Services Authority. But it was also badly addressed. Fucking bunch of wankers. It's fair to say that within the oh, SA, there, is. there were Chief specialists wanker. who understood the risks, or at least understood some of the risks. But it was hard for the um, general populace of staff to keep up to date with the technical intricacies of things that were being. The technical intricacies of the great uh, game. In any case, the regulators worked under the instruction from the government. In any case, the actual market knew best. They saw smoke and mirrors. Yeah. The market Look. turned a blind eye to the mounting lunacy. Look at it, lunacy. Great yeah. rating agencies gave the new products triple A ratings. Yeah, like S and P index. Was. Yeah, and Moody's. If you had triple A on your product, it was triple A. I mean, that's the definition of triple A. It's like a guilt edge security. There's nothing wrong with it. Guaranteed. Ain't no such animal, motherfucker. Several hundred thousand dollars at a time, and we're talking of hundreds and hundreds of issues being done a year, both with mortgage-backed securities and collateralized debt obligations. Collateralized bullshit! Raising credit Great became a gold mine. The agency stamp of approval as a standard of agency. Standard and poor. In five years, its revenues doubled. 
SAP. Standard and Poor's, SAP. That's my initials, folks. SAP, Standard and Poor's. The model that we were running was not really capturing the risk of many of these new products. Yeah, why? We didn't have adequate data. Bullshit. In which to uh, gauge how we expected those loans to behave. Frank Rater felt exposed. The banks are paying for an avalanche of ever more complex products to be evaluated. But Rater wasn't getting the information he needed to do a proper job. On one big deal, he simply refused. I have a memo that was written by the manager of these, the collateralized yeah, yeah, yeah. Collateralize it. Listen, all roads lead to Rome. I don't know if it's one or two things. It's probably a combination of the two. One is that there's some fuckers out there who thought, yep, he's awake, let's pull the rug. Look, he's manifesting, he's changing, his paradigm shifting, he's mutating. Let's, uh, let's do it. And um, maybe there's another bunch who thought, oh, fuck, we didn't realize he was such a billy badass. And everything that they sort of like, you know, invested in and thought was kosher, I have undermined. As I say, it's a combination of the two. I mean, as many people as there are on the planet... That's how many possibilities or variants there are in human behavior, although there are trends. And then, of course, there are always um, unpredictables. Anyway, let's get back to the uh, documentary. Look, there's a bull. Four companies earn the same stand. Almost nobody asks tough questions. Not regulators, politicians, and not many journalists. Merrill Lynch. They were making a ton of money. I mean, it was the most perfect product. Anybody who touched it made money along the way. Uh, From mortgage broker to the Wall Street firms that bundled them all up, the rating agencies that rated them AAA when they weren't, these yep. guys were making money hand over fist. Mm. More money than they could ever imagine. Mm. They were lionized as the new heroes of free market economics, an ideology under whose protective umbrella they'd grown fat. An ideology that said the market could do no wrong. But the empire making money from money was about to collapse. Yeah. It was a structure built on sand. Yep. How's the card? Motherfuckers. How the bank went fuck. Well, they came up against a historical event. Yes. It's called Captain Equinox. It's some good shit, though. It's all shit. Bad shit, good shit. It's all shit, because shit happens. Anyway, can't munch too much on the biscuits, because uh, I've got some oven chips going. I'm with some baked beans, yeah. And uh, check out whatever else is on TV, because this, um, this is good. I mean, there's a lot more to it than there, but can only give the general public so much, otherwise their brains will explode. And boy, when your brain explodes, it goes all over the place.